Welcome back to this series of lectures on DFT. In the previous lecture, we had seen the formula for DFT and IDFT, and we saw a numerical how to compute the DFT and IDFT of the given sequence. Now we will see one more numerical on this DFT and IDFT. But before that, now let us uh, try to understand what is this capital L and what is this capital N. Now till now we had considered the given sequence. And I told you that capital N is the length of the sequence. But if this capital N is equal to 4, 8, 16, 32 and so on, that is a multiple of 4, then in that case, the sequence of the sequence, given sequence and N are same. But many a times what happens is the given signal X of N is not a multiple of 4. So there may be given X of N, only two samples may be given or three samples may be given or five sample may be given so it may it may not be a multiple of four that is it may it may not be four eight sixteen and so on so in this case what we have to do let us try to understand it with the next numerical so now in this numerical uh, we are given the sequence x of n x of n is equal to one four zero less than n less than or equal to two so here the value of small n ranges from zero then one and then two Okay, so only three samples are given. So x of n is having three sample at 0, 1 and 2 which is 1, 1, 1 and another samples is 0. Uh, otherwise means other samples are 0. So in this case the capital L actually the length of x of n is equal to 3 only because there are only three samples. But now we have to compute the 4 point, sequ 4 point DFT sequence. So remember that DFT is computed only as a multiple of 4. So we can compute the DFT for n equal to 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 and so on. So we have to compute the DFT for a 4 point sequence n is equal to 4. So what to do with the third element that is the fourth element. So we are having the three elements as x of n is equal to 1, 1, 1. Okay. What about the fourth element? So fourth element is taken as 0. So when we want to compute uh, the 4 point sequence, 4 point DFT sequence, then we have to add one zero. So this is called as a zero padding. This is called as a zero padding. Now when given n is equal to eight. So how many zeros we have to add? So we can find out that eight minus three. So what is this three? Three is the number of samples that we have in the given sequence. So eight minus three is equal to five. So this three one 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 are there. So we have to pad five more zeros to this x of n. So this is called as a zero padding. Okay. So in this way, we can convert the given sequence of whatever may be the length into a multiples of 4, 8, 16, 32 by a process called as zero padding. So this is a very important process. So when first we, so first given thing, you have to see the given sequence. So if the sequence given sequence, the length of the sequence L, if it is not a multiple of four, then you have to make it as a multiple of four by adding the number of zeros accordingly so if the number of samples are 2 and you are asked to find out 4 point dft then you have to add two zeros if the number if the number of given samples in the sequence is 3 and you have to compute 4 point dft you have to add one zero similarly you can go for 8 point 16 point and so on so we had already seen a numerical how to compute the 4 point dft now let us see how to compute a 8 point dft so n is equal to 8 in this case so n is equal to 8 means I have to pad 5 zeros. So my given sequence becomes x of n as 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so I make use of the formula of x of k. So whenever we compute the DFT, we have to remember, we, the most important thing is the value of k. So the value of k ranges from 0 to n minus 1. So in this case, my n is equal to 8. So 8 minus 1, 7. So my k ranges from 0 to 7 so k is equal to 0 then k is equal to 1 k is equal to 2 k equal to 3 k equal to 4 k equal to 5 k equal to 6 and k equal to 7 so in this formula remember the k value ranges from 0 to n minus 1 so capital n is 8 so 0 to 7 similarly small n the given sequence index n also ranges from 0 to n minus 1 so my capital n is 8 so 8 minus 1 so it is 0 to 7 in each summation it will be from 0 to 7 so for each summation 
we have to vary the value of n from 0 to 7 okay so this is how we have to compute the dft so the formula is same so important thing is you have to know the value of k and we have to know the value of n okay so in these two values we have to uh, vary in order to find out the k next is just a simple calculation so if you understand how to how to vary the value of k and how to vary the value of n then you can compute all these values okay so as we had seen in the earlier numerical put k equal to 0 in this case so k is equal to 0 in this case first n value ranges from 0 to 7 go on substituting the values since k is equal to 0 so e raised to 0 term so e raised to 0 will become 1 so in all this case it is 1 so just add these two add the three samples given samples are 1 1 1 okay so 1 1 1 so you will get the answer as 3 similarly now if you put k equal to 1 again you vary the value of n from 0 to 7 so now you can get these exponentials now use the Euler's identity to expand these expand this exponentials so this is the importance of Euler's identity so Euler's identity helps us to convert the complex exponential signal into sinusoids okay so cos pi by 4 value is 0 0.707 and sin pi by 4 value is 0 0.707 so here you can compute these values cos pi by 2 is 0 cos pi by 2 is 0 and sin pi by 2 is 1 okay so you can compute put these values so after computing you will get this value okay so similarly for k equal to 2 you can get this value k equal to 3 we get this value k equal to 4 we get this value 5 6 and 7 so important thing is that you have to compute the values there are a lot of calculations involved in dft this shows that there are a lot of calculations involved in dft because for each value of k we have to vary the signal from 0 to n minus 1 okay and we have to compute the value and while computing the value each time we have to use the Euler's identity so you have to compute the cos function we have to compute the sine function this shows that there is a there are a lot of computations for computing the dft and once you compute the dft values okay once you compute the dft values you can tabulate the dft x of k okay here it is dft not idft this is wrong okay so dft is denoted by x of k now you can tabulate all these values so whatever values you had got 3 then this 1 1.707 minus j 1.707 minus j this value then 1 and this value j and this value last value so you can tabulate all these values so we are getting here the 8 point uh, dft of x of n so see here all these complex values some real values we are getting so this is how we compute the dft of the sequence by the formula method and we note that in this formula method there are a lot of calculations so in order to make these calculations fast or to make reduce the number of calculations we have what we call as the fft algorithm that is fast fourier transform algorithm so after this lecture we will see about the uh, matrix method for computing the dft which is a comparatively simpler method than the formula method and after seeing the form uh, matrix method we will be seeing going for fast Fourier transform algorithms and here we can understand what is the need of fast Fourier transform algorithms because fast Fourier because the computation of DFT requires a lot of time because there are a lot of computations so in order to reduce the number of computations and to reduce the time required for computations we used fast Fourier transform algorithms so FFT algorithms, FFT is not a transform, it is just an algorithm to compute DFT. So DFT is the main transform. So to compute DFT, we are using FFT. So students get confused about FFT and DFT. So FFT is not an algorithm, FFT is not a transform, it is an algorithm and it is used to compute DFT. So that is the important thing we have to note down here. Okay. So we will proceed further with our discussion of DFT in the next lecture with the matrix method for computing DFT. Thank you.